Just to go back to the point she, uh, which was made on de defined benefit is um, ultimately the state is responsible. So it means just a fiscal transfer by other means. The same thing that we did with SAA. Uh, giving SAA money through the DBSA, it's just a fiscal transfer by, by other means. Why can't we just do the fiscal transfer directly and then we deal with the consequences? Because this way you can spread it out over 20 years. See, at the moment, it, um, the GEPF isn't fully funded. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's an important thing. If the state borrows the money from the private sector, it will cost us all a lot more in interest rates. That's why I'm saying this is really about how do we manage the financial engineering of an ESCOM bailout? What is the most efficient way from the standpoint of society? What has the least costs? And I'm prepared to say this might not be the optimal way, but I don't think because it's a cost to pensioners. It's because of the cost of the state. So if we just went out and borrowed the money to pay them, you know, that just adds to the interest burden, I'm sure. Sorry, I missed Michael's talk. <laughs> because I can't do fiscal at that hour of the morning, but um, <laughs> I'm assuming you talked about rising interest payments. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask, uh, Mike, you wanted to say something. I'm going to ask Michael to well, respond. Well, I, I, I just believe Michael the feel. GPF is a fully funded fund at the moment. You know, it it's covers its liabilities. It, it, it has, it's a defined benefit fund that is solvent. If we now start making it insolvent by throwing assets into it that can't perform, then we do create a burden for the whole of society. So I'm not a major fan of, the, of that particular uh, approach. The other one that worries me, and I mean the previous speaker covered this one, is uh, we all think the fiscus is a solution to our problems. Now the government finance is in a horrible state. There's this big deficit, there's a zero growth economy which is not generating enough income, and, and they've already told us in their medium term policy statement they want to cut government spending by 150 billion a year. Now we start throwing money like we did with SA and all the rest, let's, let's give these guys a grant and hopefully they'll come right. Now, they're only going to come right if they have to go through a period of pain, which means getting costs down, getting efficiencies up, doing all those sort of issues. So I don't believe our solution in South Africa is, is the fiscus. I think we're very constrained on what we can do in the fiscus. I think we're very constrained on what we can do on monetary policy. What interested me in SONA, and I actually drew a list, well, I actually went back and read the speech, there's 50 different initiatives in that State of the Nation's address of structural adjustments and changes that they're talking about, from job summits all the way down to all these master plans and so on and so forth. And a lot of them, and they were, as I say, there are 50 of them, and only one of them was negative. That was the 49th one that he announced right at the end is that they want to bring in change in Clause 25 so they can bring in EWC, you know, expropriation without compensation. But the rest were quite positive. But they were also talking about various committees and structures and all the rest that are starting to deliver this. So it doesn't just have to be the fiscus, because the Department of Finance can't deliver on this. When the guy, when uh, Tito does his speech in you know, a week's time, uh, he's going to just talk about the, the numbers. But he can't take on the burden of all the structural adjustment that needs to happen in the economy. But what I did think about Sana was very interesting, was that they announced all those changes. Now, if Boris Johnson or Mrs. Merkel got up and said, listen, he has a 50-point plan to turn around the German economy, everybody's saying, well, that's very interesting. <laughs> can some of these things stick? Because not all of them can stick. But a lot of them can. But what we're talking about in SONA and what we're also talking about in the Department of Finance's economic transformation and inclusive growth strategies are supply-side solutions. So we're saying we make the economy more efficient, we make it deliver, point the lady was making earlier, how come government and private sector can't get on? How come the private sector doesn't trust the government? Well, the private sector says the government doesn't trust us. We've got to give money so the government can build things. The private sector is saying, forget that, give us the money, we'll build things. But we've got to get that structure and that trust together. But the supply side is where the reforms really are. And the solutions to Eskom are also supply side related. Make that more efficient and the money will come. <clears throat> I want to get back to that, but I think I want to give Michael an opportunity to... So, so I think I, I disagree with everyone on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I think uh, um, they are thinking about, firstly, the, 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 the GPF in financial terms. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they are thinking that the GPF is just like any other private, or some of the panelists are saying it's like any other private sector um, pension fund. It is not. The GPF is a social compact between taxpayers and public servants. 
macroeconomic, in terms of macroeconomic theory, the jury has long been out about whether it's better or worse to have a fully funded or a pay-as-you-go public pension system. And many countries in the world uh, don't have any funding at all. In fact, South Africa is highly unusual in the world. There are many well-run, well-managed, fiscally sound economies that have pay-as-you-go pension f systems funding their, their, their public servants. But it's a social compact, so I, I also disagree with Nevo and others who say it's defined benefit. The fact that it's defined benefit does not mean that it cannot be redefined. Mm -hmm. Because once, uh, at the moment, the public servants have a security in uh, assets that are tangible, <coughs> that can be, uh, that, that, that have a legal status. If you exchange that with an IOU from taxpayers, it's quite possible in 20 years' time, taxpayers can balk and say, now we have different priorities. Now we can no longer fund our retired public servants because we need whatever, a nuclear power station, right? So there are many countries that don't have uh, um, um, this funding. So, but defunding the GPF has massive consequences for the macroeconomy macro and the fiscus, for example. Brazil doesn't have a pre-funded uh, pension fund for its public sector workers. And as a consequence of that, its fiscus is highly regressive because you're raising tax, tax funding in order to pay the pensions of relatively wealthy elite former public servants. So it's a social compact, and a social compact can be changed. I think we need to separate it from the idea of the pension fund industry and private pensions. That's something completely different. This is a compact between taxpayers and the current uh, uh, generation of, and, and the past generation of public sector workers. It can be changed uh, to achieve these objectives, but nothing is guaranteed, and an IOU can be defaulted on. Great. I think we should actually... I think perhaps I can respond to that. Okay. If, if, <laughs> if you say it's a social compact, it assumes government has been able to deliver to society. That's why the country would agree to take on the risk. But where we stand currently, government have failed miserably as far as running SOEs is concerned. The rampant state capture that we know about today cannot, cannot possibly say that social compact that was then still exists today. It's possibly broken which is why there's a pushback against that, pos that possibility of, of using uh, those pension funds to bail out ESCO. The social compact is broken. It has to be rebuilt, and for it to be rebuilt, government has to prove that it can run these assets profitably in a good way. Without that proof, this social compact will, ne will never exist. It's just imposed. So I want to give Neva a chance to reply, so maybe keep the mic. If you want, no, I just, <laughs> I just, I just not invited to reply. Okay. I just wanted to say quickly, though, the difference between us and Brazil is that almost every other country in the world, uh, police, nurses, and educators are employed at the municipal level. So when you talk about public sector elites, here all of those people are employed at the national public service le level and belong to the GPF. So it's not quite the same thing as when you talk about like the public administration in other countries, what their pension fund looks like. And I think that it's mm. we have like a lot of. No, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. I'm just, and I know you know that too. I'm just making sure other people understand that the, the, mm -hmm. when we talk public service here, it's a very different animal from what you see in other countries because people are employed at the central level and not at the municipal level. 